Okay, then I'll call you tomorrow. What time? Oh, sometime in the afternoon. Probably after my chem class. Will you be home then? I'll be home. Okay. Well, good night. Good night. Hey, Sue. Did I say happy birthday? Yes. Thanks. Yeah. We'll see you. Hi, Bob. Still raining outside? Yeah. Hey, Bob, where's all that chicken Sue brought us? What did you say? Never mind, I suppose I'll live. Art, I can't hear a word you're saying. We'll have to wait a minute. Hey, Bob, where's all that chicken Sue brought us? Where in creation did I put that? I'm sure I put it around here somewhere. Elaine. I was just thinking about you. I just thought I'd call and tell you that I won that teaching assignment we were talking about. Eight weeks in Austria this summer. Isn't that tremendous? Hey, that's good news. You know, when something good happens to you, it always happens to me, too. Remote control or something. Let's know at your house. Is Bob home? Yeah, he's here. He just came in. And I'll tell you what's new. I just lost a very important geology paper. If I don't find it pretty soon, my name's going to be Mud. Well, you better find them. I don't want to be Mrs. Mud. Great. I'm sick of that. I don't think I'd care what my name was, as long as it's the same as yours. Elaine, you're the nicest thing that ever happened to me. No kidding. 
How come I deserve a girl like you? You know, I came home from my mission thinking I'd never find the right girl, and, and then wham, six weeks later, there you were sitting in the institute class. I looked at you and, and knew that you were all the things I wanted you to be. Hey, speaking of institute. I thought you were speaking of me. <laughs> well, don't you want to go to the student ward square dance? Oh, I think that'd be fun. Bonnie has a new western dress she said I could borrow. Well, all right. You wear your western dress and I'll wear my Levi's. And we'll show those squares how to do -si do Okay? Okay. See you then. Bye. Bye. That was sticky. Well, man, that's how love is. You ought to know. Hey, have you seen a paper around here with some geology notes on it? It's on top of the fridge, right where you left it. Oh, thanks. Hey, this thing between you and Elaine, it's for real? I mean, for life? Not for life, fella. For eternity. We're making sure of that. Bob, are you okay? Yeah, sure. Sure. I thought you might have a little bit of a chill. You look kind of pale when you came in tonight. Maybe you better hit the sack. I feel okay. I mean, I'm not catching a cold or anything. I don't know. I... I just... Well, how come you're home so early? It's nearly 11. Well, that's early for you and Sue. Oh, brother, you really saved my life finding these notes. Now I can quit worrying and sleep in peace. Yeah, I think I'll hit the sack, too. I'm kind of beat. Yeah, good idea. Should we have our prayer? Heart, have you ever felt disgusted? I mean, completely disgusted with yourself? Well, sure, lots of times. I do such stupid things. I like those notes. I could have easily gone to class tomorrow morning and left them here. I couldn't begin to count all the stupid things I do in a week. Why? Oh, no real reason. I oh, forget it. Are you sure you're okay? Lay off it, Art. Will you? Sorry, Bob. Your turn to pray. Will you do it tonight, Art? Okay? Well, sure. I'd be happy to. Brigham Young felt very strongly about this. So much so, that he said if young people could look into the eternities and see the full value of a temple marriage, they'd crawl across the continent on their hands and knees just to obtain it. Since he was a prophet and knew what he was talking about, we can accept this statement at face value. Paul also understood this when he said, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now, are we in agreement that temple marriage is the only way to get married? All right, then, let's get down to cases. Did you ask Bob to invite Sue and come with us? Yes, I did. He said he'd think it over. I guess he thought it over and decided not to come. He hasn't said much all day. I wish those kids were attending the Institute with us. Brother Williams is such a great teacher. You know, that class just kind of sets the mood for me the entire day. I tried to talk him into uh, signing up this semester, but you know, Bob, if you push him too hard, he hangs back. Maybe I better tell Sue in case she decides to push him into marriage. He didn't act like a fellow who wants to get married, especially last night. He seems so, oh, so strange. And anyway, he's planning on a mission. How do you mean, strange? Well, we hit the sack just after you called. I was almost asleep when the telephone rang. It was Sue, and she wanted to talk to Bob. When I told him it was her, he went in the other room to talk to her. And no kidding, he shut the door of our room so I couldn't hear. Well, that's something we just never do. Oh, Bob and I just don't have any secrets. Well, maybe they quarreled and she called to make up. No, I don't think so. There's something wrong there. I don't know what it is, but I don't like it. And it's disturbing la joie de vivre. 
Keep up with this core dancing or not. I think you're just out of condition. Maybe we ought to do it more often. No, it isn't that. It's just that big girl in the last set. She got a hold of me on those swinger partners and twirled me around like a rag doll. <laughs> Man, is she strong. So I noticed. I think maybe it's just her way of uh, showing her affection for you. You don't deserve a drink after that, but I'll get you one anyway. Oh, I'm surely glad to see you two here. By the way, I've been looking around for Bob and Sue. Have you seen them? Uh, we invited them, but they're not here, Bishop. Oh, those rascals. You know, I've got an appointment at my home tomorrow evening with Bob. Would you remind him of it, Art? Sure, I'll be glad to. Mr. Miller, why don't you take care? Thank you. Are you all right? Well, what's the matter? I'm all right. Just leave me alone. Well, something's been eating at you ever since last night. What is it? Have you and Sue quarreled? No. Call it school. Call it anything you want. I'm packing and going home. Well, it can't be school. You're too smart for that. What is it? Will you leave me alone, Art? you just leave me alone? Okay, suit yourself. We've been friends for a long time, Bob, but you act like I might contaminate you by offering to help. Do what you want. I don't care. Art. Art, I'm sorry. I don't need to take it out on you. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. You probably needed to let off a little steam anyway. I think I understand. You couldn't possibly understand. Here, read this. Happy birthday, dear Sue. A rose for every year of your life. Sorry we couldn't make it last weekend to visit with you a while. Business held us here at home. We love you and send this reminder of our faith and trust in you. Love your dad and mother. Understand? Of course you wouldn't. Sue came here this evening and threw these in my face. She said she's going home to tell her folks. She will too. I know Sue. I guess she has a right to tell her family. Don't you get it? Art, does a barn have to fall on you? The way it happened last night. I can't explain it. It just happened, that's all. First time I ever kissed Sue, I said, this is it. It's the real thing. Now I don't know. I don't feel the same about her. I know she doesn't feel the same about me. I guess we've got no one to blame but ourselves. Heavens knows our parents have told us. We've been taught it in the church. Bob, oh, I... Whatever made you do this? 
I don't really know. It all started so... so innocently. So it seemed to be everything I ever wanted in a girl. I don't really believe I dated another girl after I met Sue. Whenever we double dated, we just weren't happy. We wanted to be alone. And when we were alone together all the time, we just naturally became more intimate. We found ourselves in compromising situations too often. How did it happen? It was just one thing after another. With each date, we seemed to get more and, and more intimate with each other. And I know now that this was a mistake. The bishop called us in and talked to us, but we didn't think anything could happen to us. We thought we could stop any time we wanted, and now it's too late. Last week, the bishop asked me to come in to see him. Appointments for tomorrow. I think he wants to talk about a mission. It's been my dream ever since I was a little boy. My parents' dream. Art, will I ever be able to go now? I mean, after this? I can't answer that, Bob. I know you have to be worthy. It's funny, we were talking about this very thing today in Institute, in connection with temple marriage. I wish you'd have been there. It's a serious thing you've done, and you can never go back. But you can go forward. And by true repentance, I'm sure there's hope. That's right, the next bus for Franklin. Three minutes past 11. At what time? 11.03. 11.03. Okay, thank you very much. Go ahead and say it. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. No. No, I think you're doing exactly the right thing. If you want to live with this for the rest of your life, every waking hour for the next 65 years, you're doing the right thing. Go ahead, run away from it. I mean, just try. I know you and your conscience too well. But I can't tell the bishop, Art. Well, it was tough enough telling you. I love the bishop, and he trusts me. That's why I can't tell him. But you know he'll probably find out sooner or later. Wouldn't you rather be the one to tell him? If you don't, you'll spend the rest of your life wishing you had. It's tough, Art. It's tough. Well, of course it's tough. But you've got to confess this to the bishop. Get it off your chest. How long before your bus leaves? About three hours. I've got to check out of school first. I told you I'd do that for you. Here, why don't you take my car and go for a ride? Give you time to do some thinking.
Dear Father, I know I've made a terrible mistake. Please help me now to do what I know I've got to do. After you talked to Sue and me, we took a long ride and talked over the things you said. But we weren't very wise. Bishop, we didn't follow your counsel. We rationalized that since we loved each other so much and oh, we kind of belonged to each other anyway, that well, it wasn't so wrong to neck and, and pet. I guess we convinced ourselves that nothing serious would happen. Deep down, I wasn't happy with what we were doing. I felt guilty. When I'd go home, I'd, I'd wonder if this was what love was supposed to be like. I began to realize that petting was seriously wrong. Did you ever fast and pray for help, Bob? Bishop, I didn't feel like it. Well, I didn't see how I could ask the Lord for help. Well, I didn't seem to have the willpower to stop myself. Well, and then when, well, after it finally happened, I couldn't sleep. I talked it over with Arden. And then today I prayed. And I knew I had to confess this to you and, and the Lord. Can I ever be forgiven, Bishop? The Lord does forgive, but I'm sure that you already know that the way of a transgressor is hard. It always has been and always will be. It's a long road back. Bob, I was going to interview you for a mission, but I'm sure that you know now that this will delay any consideration for a mission at this time. Yes, I, I realize now how serious this sin is, but what can we do? Where do we go from here? Well, forgiveness comes from total repentance. The Lord has made clear the tremendous blessings that can come through the marriage covenant to those who are morally clean. The Lord still loves you, Bob, and I'm sure that he's pleased that you've become aware of the seriousness of your transgression. The Lord has made it possible for you to obtain forgiveness of this sin if you can demonstrate through the months and the years that your repentance is genuine. I want to be forgiven. I'll try with all my heart to repent. Now that you've let your guard down once, you'll find that you'll be tempted to let down on your priesthood duties and your other responsibilities in the church. I'm cautioning you this way, Bob, because Satan will try to exploit you further. And you've got to do everything possible to keep close to the Lord by saying your daily prayers and by living the gospel. Well, I know it isn't going to be easy, but I'll do it. I'm glad you came to see me, Bob. Sue was in to see me this morning, and you have no idea how relieved I am to know that you both recognize the seriousness of this transgression. I want to see you frequently for a while, but if there's any other time you want to talk to me, why, give me a call, any time, day or night. Especially if you find yourself getting discouraged. And one other thing, Bob, I want you to know that everything that you've told me will be held strictly confidential. Thanks, Bishop. And Bob, if you can do these things that the Lord requires, then you'll come to know the truthfulness of his words when he said, Behold, he who hath repented of his sins, the same is forgiven. And I, the Lord, remember them no more. <laughs>